so glad, as always, that you're tuning in to Children's Ministry. So get your phones, get your Bibles, get those things that you have the Word of God on so we can get in the Word on today that He has for us. Again, as always, I'll begin with prayer as you're getting those things. Heavenly Father, we come to thank you for this day, for this is the day that you have made, and we choose to rejoice and be glad in it. God, we give you all honor and praise for this day, for all that you're going to do, for all that shall be accomplished today, oh Heavenly Father. We give you praise and honor for each and everything, God. We thank you for this time that we share in your word. In your son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, Faith Kids, we're here for another exciting word for us on this week. Last week, we talked about what, Faith Kids? What are we supposed to be doing? Loving your enemies. I know you had a great word from the Lord on last week. I know that you've been doing those things. You've been loving others, loving those who don't love you back, even though you're showing their, God's kindness to them and you're meditating upon your memory verse each and every week. I know you are a fake kid. So again, on this week, we're going to be talking about complete in Jesus, that we are complete in Jesus. So let me begin with a question, fake kids. Let me ask you, when you are, we're a Christians. So just because we go to church, does that make us a Christian? I'm listening to you, waiting for your response. No, it doesn't. Just because we go to church every week, and if we have midweek service, we're going to midweek service, that does not make us a Christian. I know, right? He was like, well, what does it do then, right? What makes us a Christian is our character, what we do, what we say, and all of those other things that we do when we're not sitting in service, right? That's what makes us a Christian because that's what's showing God's ways and showing his love and showing how he does things. That's what makes you and I a Christian. It's the character that we have and what we do and what we say. So let's turn in your Bibles to Colossians chapter two, and we're going to read verse, start with verse number six. Colossians chapter two, we're going to start with verse number six. And it reads... And now, just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. What are we going to do, faith kids? We're going to continue to follow Jesus. Just as we've accepted him, made him Lord of our lives, we've given our lives to him. You know, we make the confession with our mouth and we believe in our heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and we're saved. We're now in the body of Christ. And it says that we're to do what now? We are to continue to follow him. That means we're supposed to be doing what Jesus did and following what his example that he gave us when he was here. We're supposed to be trusting and relying upon him. That's what it means when it says we're to follow him. We're trusting him, not our own way of doing things, how we think we need to do some things. No, we're going to trust God, trust Jesus, him leading and holy through the Holy Spirit, guiding us and what we are to do. So we're supposed to be obeying. I know we talked about obedience before. We're supposed to be obeying. And what are we obeying? We're obeying Jesus. And how do we obey Jesus? Through his, through the word of God. We're obeying the word that God has given us. This is our instruction booklet. Just like you're in school, fake kids, and you're learning and you have I know everything is virtual or half virtual, and you, but you have books and you know you have to study. Well, this is what we have. This is our study book right here. This is the book that tells us how we're supposed to do and how we're supposed to live and what happens and what, how all the things that we need to know is in this book. That's why we meditate upon his word, right? That's why we have our memory verse every week. So you get in the habit of studying and focusing on the word of God and getting it inside of you so that what? You can live how God wants you to live. That's how we do it, faith kids. It's his word. We're living, obeying, and trusting and relying on him. But how can we trust and rely on him when we don't know? 
we know because we study in the word of God. So we're to follow him. We're to have the character that Jesus had, right? We're to be like him. You know, uh, there was a saying once upon a time that says, what would Jesus do? Yeah, we're to be doing what Jesus did. He loved others. He helped others. He went about helping. That's what we're going to be doing. And it's not about what we do, you know, when like our parents is looking or what we do maybe at church when, you know, when I'm looking or something like that. No, it's what we do all the time. It, that's our character. What do we do when nothing, no one is looking? If you see a piece of paper on the floor, say kids, I know, what do you do? You pick it up, right? You don't just leave it on the floor. I didn't put it there. Why I got to pick it up? Because that's what Jesus would do. Pick up the paper, right? That's what we do. That's character. That's the godly character we're to have that no matter whether someone's watching us or whether we're going to get points or whether we're going to get a prize or whatever. No, that's not why we're doing things. We're doing things because it's the right thing to do. It's the way that Jesus says to do things. And that's how we're complete in him when we're doing what he says. We're complete in him. Let's continue to read on. In our scriptures, it says, let your roots grow down into him and let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth and you were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. It says, let your roots go down. Let's think about a flower because I know you've studied in science about the flower and the roots of flowers and plants and trees. Where are the roots? Are they way up at the top? No, where are the, the roots of the plants and the trees? They're down under the ground. They're deep under there, right? That's what sustains the plant or the flower or the tree. It's those roots and those roots are deep down in the soil that helps them. Well, we're like the plant and our roots, who we are, should be deep down in Jesus. That's who sustains us. That's who helps us, who completes us, who strengthens us. So our roots are deep down like those plants in the soil. We're deep down in Jesus. And how do we get that? In the word. That's how we get it. We have to be deep down meditating, have that word in us, not just that we read it, but we're in that word so that we know. That's why you have this memory verse every week. It's not just to give you something to do and something to read. No, we have to have that word of God deep inside of us so that when we're, the enemy tries to come and, and get us off track, we know what to do because we, we're rooted. We're deep down in God's word, in Jesus, grounded, and we're able to sustain. Okay, let's continue to read fake kids. It says, don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high sounding nonsense that come from human thinking and from the spiritual powers of this world rather than from Christ. In other words, you know, that's people that just, you know, talk, 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 and they give you all this philosophy and they sound good, but it has no bearing. It is not what God says. We're not to be listening to the, those things. We're not to be doing things the way the world does things. We're not going to do how they do. We're not going to say what they say. We're going to do what, what God says. That's what we're going to do. We're going to follow Jesus example and do those things which he did because that's how God wants us to be. So we're not going to do it the way we're not going to say the things that the world says, and we're not going to do things the way the world says that. He says we're not to be following after those type of things, those philosophies and the way they do all of those things. We're not going to be concerned with those things, but we're going to do that. As we just said, we're going to be rooted in God's word. That's what we're going to do. So let's continue to read. For in Christ lives all the fullness of the God in a human body. Jesus was like, was God himself here on earth. He did not use his godly powers because he you know, was God himself. But he, as a man, came here like us to show us that we're able to do it. So we can't say, well, you know, Jesus was God and that's why he did all of these things. And that's why he was able to stand and he was able to love and he was able to do all of these things because he was God. No, he came here just as you and I came here and he was 
able to do it. That's why he says we're to follow after him. He was the great example for us that we can do it. We can love others. We can live a godly life. We can do what God has called us to do because Jesus did it. He says, I got to be about my father's business and I'm only going to do what he tells me to do. And I'm only going to say what he tells me to say. That's what we're to do. We're to do what God says do. We're to say what he say. We're to go where he says, because he has laid out our plans and our path long time ago for us. Long time, faith kids. He's ordered your footsteps. So he's going to lead you down the path that he has set for you. And we know the the word tells us that that plan that he has for you, that he has set apart long time ago, it's a plan to increase you. It's a plan to bless you. It's a plan to give you an abundant life. That's the plan that he has for you, that he has set for you long time ago. What we're to do is to follow in Jesus' example and walk in the ways of that Jesus walked the same way he did. Have this word of God in your heart, doing what the word tells us that we're to do. That is how we're to do it, faith kids. Let's continue to read. It says, so you also are complete through your union with Christ. You are complete because of you are in Christ, because Christ is in us. That's how we are complete. Who is the head of over every ruler and authority. Christ is the head. He has defeated Satan. He has won it, he says, and he has given us the keys to the kingdom. We have all the power and authority here on this earth to do what we need to do, to do what God has called us to do. You can do it, fake kids. It's not an age thing. It's not when I get old or, you know, maybe after college and, you know, maybe after I get married and have a couple kids. No, no, no. Think about those people in the Bible who we studied, Daniel and the Hebrew boys. They were young kids. So you're never too young. God is using you right now at the age where you are. He has a purpose and a plan right now for you to do his will on the earth, for you to be a light to someone else, for you to lead someone else to him. If we're showing God's love, that's what happens. When we're doing what we're supposed to do, when we're showing God's love, that draws people to God. That's how God gets people to come and know him, to know his love, to know that he loves them. It's through us. He's not coming down on this earth per se to show others, okay, I'm God and this is, I, you know, sent my son for you. He's already been here. He had Jesus already. So now he has you, he has me. We're the ones who's leading others to see Christ. We're the ones who's leading those to say, this is how God says, this is what I do. This is what, that's how we're to do. We are to show God to others. And it's about what we do. It's not about so much what we say. It's about what we do. Do we get angry and storm off and throw things? No, because God's God's love. That's not the way to do things. Yeah, you can get mad and get angry, but it's the what you do after that. It's how we handle that. So fake kids, don't storm off. Don't throw things. Get you know. No, that's not God's way. So we're going to do what He says. Do in next verse it says, when you came to Christ, you were uncircumcised but not by a physical circumstance. It's telling us that when Jesus came, when we accepted him as our Lord and Savior, he took away all of our sin nature. He took that all away that we can live the abundant life in him. So let's continue on. Let's go down, read verse number 14. It says, he canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. So all of these things, these sinful natures that that we had, they were all nailed to the Christ. Jesus canceled. I know you don't know anything about, you know, having debt and all that and credit cards, but you will never know anything about having debt and credit cards. But when you have a debt that you can't pay or something you want to buy and you can't afford it, you can't get like, oh, I'm supposed to pay it, pay it, pay it. Jesus took that. It's like he paid the whole bill off and it is zero balance. And that's what he did when he came here on earth. 
last scripture in this way he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities he shamed them publicly by his victory and over them on the cross so faith kids we are complete in jesus he has paid the price for all of our sins he has cleansed us he has made us righteous so what are we going to do? We're going to be rooted and grounded in him. We're going to be in God's word so he can show us what he has for us. Hey kids, I know you are blessed by the word today. I've continued to read these scriptures on this week and I will see you next week. Have a blessed week. Bye.